Well, uh, thanks everybody for coming to the uh, closing for the Universal Flag exhibition with Enrico Magnani. And we are very excited to be here and have this conversation. My name is Sergio Gomez and I'm the curator for the exhibition. We are at ACS Gallery in Chicago on the fourth floor of the Joby Art Center. And we are now closing, wrapping up the exhibition. And I want to thank you for uh, checking this video out and for being here. So Enrico, welcome. How thank are you? Thank you, Sergio. Thank you. I'm very fine, very fine, very happy of this uh, new experience that mm -hmm. I had in Chicago. And uh, for me, everything was new, fascinating, uh, mm -hmm. but this gave to me new energy, mm -hmm. new ideas to create uh, mm -hmm. what uh, you have seen in this uh, exhibition. Great. And uh, Enrico, you've been here in Chicago for how many days? Well, uh, staying was... Uh, 25 days, 25, 25 okay. days, and of course, uh, a lot of these days have been used to organize and create the exhibition. Wonderful. Yes. So, what I want to talk a little bit about uh, is uh, the work and the process that you use to make yeah. the work. Um, as a curator myself, and you know, working with you has been a really interesting and pleasurable experience to uh, see you produce the work. Because when you arrived here to Chicago, <laughs> only you had your suitcase and <laughs> no art. <laughs> so all the work was produced here in, the, in Chicago and that uh, you kind of absorb that energy and then you put it on exactly. the work that we had yes. in the exhibition. Yes. And so curate an, to curate an exhibition without art is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. So it puts all the pressure on the artist, right, to produce the work. Normally, when I curate a show, you know, I, I look at all selection and then we go through a process of seeing what makes a good exhibit. But when there's no art, <laughs> it's about, it's about you know, what you are able to produce. And I have to say that uh, I was really, really excited and pleased to see you. such a wonderful uh, work that you did in Chicago with so much cohesiveness, yes. uh, where all the work in the show was connected. Uh, there was a, a very good synergy between pieces. Um, you, you work on small studies and yes. then the very large piece that we have behind us and everything connects very nicely. Uh, there's a nice transition, there's a nice cohesiveness as I said. And, um, it, it, it's a harmonious exhibition. Yes. It, it really exceeded my expectations and that's very good, very Thank wonderful. You, Thank you. So tell us a little bit now that you know, you're a little more relaxed. We had the opening, <laughs> yeah. uh, you worked really hard for a few days, you were making all the work and then Installing the work, and we talk about you know positioning the pieces, and then we had a wonderful opening yeah. uh, with people here and having great conversations with people that came and met you for the very first time. Sure. So now that all this is kind of past and relaxed, and you had a little bit of time to enjoy the city as well, uh, what are your very first impressions? You know, now that you can go back and say, well, you know, the work is wow. done, <laughs> opening is over. You know, yeah. how do you feel about the work that you produce? Well, the work, uh, uh, it's important to say that uh, these are works done on canvas. And canvas, uh, since uh, four years, is not my uh, leading media on which I work. Okay. And I stopped working on canvas um, more or less around 2012. Yeah. When I discovered new media mm -hmm. and that are difficult to, to transport uh, or uh, to find in place. Yes. Therefore, when uh, I had this opportunity to exhibit my work in Chicago, I had to read, uh, uh -huh. think a little bit about my strategy and uh, the kind of artworks I would have done. Yes. And I decided to work on canvas because it's much easier to find. I don't need a specific you know, material, specific tools to mm -hmm. create the artworks. And once uh, decided that the work would have been done on canvas, yeah. then I said, uh, I want to keep also my message. The message is important because all of my artistic path is based on uh, the collection of spiritual traditions okay. and uh, reworking, of course, in a new way, in a, in a modern way, maybe. But the content for me is very important. <coughs> then I said, uh, I want to keep the message. And the message with this, Mm -hmm. should be integrated with this uh, uh, media right. and at the end came up the idea of making the universal flag because yes. my work is based on these universal archetypes mm -hmm. 
that are symbols that uh, all over the world are well known since the age, uh, since primitive age. Yeah. And uh, the cross, the moon, the sun, uh, triangle, square, circle, you know, these yeah. symbols very, very easy to find all over the world. And I wanted to work with it. Mm -hmm. The four elements, air, fire, water, mm -hmm. and earth, uh, these are also common all over the world. Right. Then I decided to create a collection now I, I'm calling the Chicago collection. <laughs> the uh, yeah, yeah, that is this universal flag. And as yeah. you said, uh, I started with studies because I wanted to test uh, the colors, the new materials that I have all around me. Yeah. And once I found uh, the right uh, colors, the right shapes, uh, um, everything was uh, fine. Then I, I, I painted the big uh, artworks. Uh, and as you see now, the universal flag, the concept is this one, a flag that doesn't divide, but you know it. Mm. Because usually a flag says, uh, I am me, so you are you, right. divide. Right. So we and you. Mm -hmm. Now, this flag that contains uh, all the elements uh, common to the world and to the uh, human race uh, can be a symbol of union. And mm -hmm. this is the big message that I would like to transmit uh, to the public. public. Yes. Yes. And you know, when we look at ancient cultures, yes. most of ancient cultures, you know, had these strong relations with all these four elements. Yes. yes. So exactly. it, it's very interesting that you use that as a universal symbol yes. to kind of create unity. Right. Yes. Yes. So uh, when you presented the exhibition here in Chicago and you had the opening and a lot of people came and talked to you, yes. do you remember some of the conversations that you had? Like, you know, what did people say about? Yes, the, sure. what, did they, what did the American audience got from... Well, from I think most of them were very um, surprised by these uh, explosions yes. and uh, the symbol of the cross together. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, what is this? Because you can be, if you don't know the meaning, you can be surprised from the right. two things that uh, are very far from yes. each other. Um, and I had to explain to these people why uh -huh. there isn't why. And it's quite easy, because also in, uh, in ancient tradition, you always have the creation of uh, the world, the universe, uh, yeah. coming from a big bang. Mm -hmm. So, in every cosmogony all over the world, uh, you find uh, um, an era, a, a, a time zero, in which there was a big bang. Yeah. And this is what I try to represent in these artworks. And the cross is a symbol of life. The cross is a symbol that uh, uh, suggests order. Okay. So, from the chaos, the order comes. And this is important. The universe is always based on chaos and order. When you have life, you have order. When you have death, you have disorder and chaos. So this is a part of it. And the colors, of course, the colors, the four colors are symbols for the four elements. Right. Yeah. So this was a question that I had to answer many times. <laughs> but of right. course, people were, they said, wow, what, what, a, what a beautiful uh, creation. Someone said, right. uh, yeah, it sounds like creation of Michelangelo. And I said, hey, I'm very generous. <laughs> but actually, it's a creation. This is the right. meaning that should be transmitted. And mm -hmm. even if you really don't understand each uh, part of the painting, what, it is, what counts is this uh, impression that you receive mm -hmm. and that should be uh, stimulating mm -hmm. for your thought, for your mind, for your heart, you know, to, right. to, to think about these primordial elements right. that are common for every one of us. Yeah, and, and you know, that relates very well to the painting that we have behind us, you know, where you yes. have almost like a piece of the cosmos and almost an uh, energy explosion, or like a comet yes. going behind yes. us uh, as we look into the faraway sky, but it's also kind of like the, also the microcosmos could be, yeah. you know, a cell or a sure. uh, microscopic, yes. you know, part of our body amplified yeah. thousands yeah. at a time. So it, it's this both ends and the connection that is made through both. Yeah, the both reality. The micro and, and micro, yeah, exactly. that join. Uh, yeah, so at the end it creates this perfect harmony yes. where you're working with both simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, some of the uh, in our conversations that we had as you were working with the medium and you were uh, in this room uh, working on, <laughs> on the floor as many of these pieces were created. Yes. And we had this conversation that 
uh, when you show me the video for you making the work, it's, it's like a dance, right? It, it's, 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 a, it's a very it specific way in which these explosions or these, yes. these drops of energy have to happen, yes. uh, where they, it, it, it makes it for you not only a mental practice in the hand, but it involves the whole body. Yes, yes. you're Tell right. Tell us a little right. bit about that. I, 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 it's important also to, to, to explain how it works because yeah. um, when you see this color that is thrown mm -hmm. on the canvas, uh, of course this is something that is done randomly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I cannot control every drop of color falling on the canvas, but I can control the fact that I want to make a dripping on a certain part of the canvas. Right, in a direction. In direction, yeah. exactly, because in this one it's only one and right. it's not easy to understand how it works, but there are pieces in which you have 12 or 15 it's different, like, three, three, like, like, yeah, like the sun, no? like right. the rays of the sun. And in this case, you can't be wrong, because yes. when you create the, the body of, uh, of, the, of the painting, yes. then you have time, you can re repaint many times <coughs> the color, if it is not the right one that you exactly. have in mind. But when you throw the color on the surface, and uh, you, you, you cannot miss, the, yeah. uh, you see what I mean? And uh, it becomes like, I think, uh, when you are throwing arrow, uh, once it is done, it is done. Well, when I, when I saw the video of me painting in, uh, on the floor, or yeah. these paint, big paintings, and I, when I do it, I just see my hands, I just see my feet, yeah. but I cannot see myself from outside. Right. And the video gave me an idea of how I work. <laughs> right. And actually, it was really, I say, beautiful to see, because it's like a dance. Mm -hmm. And you have to be in harmony with your hands, Food, you, you, you have to turn all around, you don't have to touch parts of the, of the painting that are wet right. and everything should be, should develop in a, in, a, in a very harmonious way. Right. So, once you know this, you see the painting with other eyes, mm -hmm. in another way, from another point of view. It's not simply the throw of the color, simply like this, by, by chance mm -hmm. it happens. No, it must be regulated. By some harmony behind, yeah, yeah, and I think that you know all the pieces kind of share that uh, experience in a way from the larger ones, even from some of the smaller pieces that I still see, yeah. you know, from your studies, for yes. example, yeah. where you're able to get this uh, this big uh, drop of energy, but yeah. also in a small scale. Yes, yes. yes. smaller brush, probably. <laughs> right. The small scale is also important because you have different proportion. Right. If you take the small, uh, let, let everyone know the small ones. Okay. We, we can measure that. You can pass me that yeah. here. Exactly. Here's here's a very good uh, for everybody to see a very good example. Yes, of a, of a small <laughs> work where you also can get. Sure. Same. Thank you, Sergio. This, this is a, a, actually a good idea because uh, speaking about small scale is not the same. The harmony in a small painting is not the same that you have if you make it bigger. Right. So you have to resize everything. Mm -hmm. For example, the shape, the size of the cross cannot be simply brought to right. the, high, the bigger size of the new canvas exactly. that you're going to paint. And so a study mm -hmm. is important to test the quality of the color, the, the geometries, but it's not simply a smaller mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, you know, copy of the big one. Yeah. This is important. And sometimes a small painting, uh, um, you have a different relation with a small painting as a, has a, has a, how can I say, as a, what kind of an as a view. Yeah. Because if you see a small one, you dominate the painting. Mm -hmm. If you see a big one, the painting is dominated you. And the, the relation between is very different. Some people prefer to have this small object because they say, oh, it's like a jewel, it's like a, you know, a <laughs> precious jewel. Yes, yeah. some other people prefer, like being in a movie theater and see, right. oh, yes, I'm watching like a, 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 a film, it's a film, a steady film. Right. Steady film. Wonderful, thank you. Let me return this <laughs> back to you <laughs> where it belongs. Right. Thank you, uh, Enrico, for you know, giving us a little bit of insight into that uh, process of you working. And now as you have, uh, you know, wrap up here the show in Chicago and you go back to Italy, yes. uh, how does the trip influence what you do as you come back? Well, uh, for sure I have to take some uh, days of rest yeah. and uh, make a uh, good meditation <laughs> on, on, everything, uh, <laughs> on everything that happened uh, during this long time and yes. very intense time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, a lot of new impressions and not only about uh, painting. For sure this, uh, this uh, collection that I created will have a follow-up. Right. Yeah, follow up because uh, um, there are some good ideas in it that I never did before, and so I want to work on it. Right. But also the environment in which we live during these days, American yeah. art and American artists, mm -hmm. and all this new world that is opening, mm -hmm. and you know I I'm seeing that from inside now. It's not simply a painting that is traveling for making an exhibition. Right. Now I am traveling and I'm really here in place. Yeah. So uh, this is, a, a, I think, a, a huge experience and I'm not uh, uh, sure I really, I'm, I'm realizing everything that it can yes. make to me. Right. You know. Kind of until you get back to your familiar space yeah. and then you can <laughs> think of, you know, what happens. Yeah. Because I believe that anytime we go out of work, out of our uh, space or work and you know we go to another country, another culture. Yes. We always come back in some way change. Yes. Yeah, you know, with new new ways of looking at things. So uh, I look forward to see what, what you will do in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also curious to see what this will end uh, end up uh, because uh, there are as I said many good ideas that are now in my mind mm -hmm. and I really I'm looking forward to uh, Put it in reality. Yeah, in reality. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Uh, tell us, Enrico, for, for friends who will watch this later on through video, uh, where can they find more information about your work if they would like to see more of your work online? Sure. Uh, or if they go to Italy, you know, where uh, are you located in what city? Yes, yes. Uh, well, the city uh, is a small city called Reggio Emilia, where my studio is. Uh, Northern north, part of Italy. North, right? north of Italy. But, uh, I spent uh, some time also in Germany and in France, so these are the three um, countries in which I, I live and work more. And um, for sure, I have a website, I have a website uh, enricomagnaniart.com, okay. and uh, all the social that are uh, the most common socials. Yeah. And uh, yes, then there are catalogs, books published, uh, I mean, everything is available. Really good. Yes, really good, yes. Well, Enrico, I want to take an opportunity to, again, thank you for coming to Chicago to ACS Gallery here at the Fort Rolle Jovial Center. We really had a great uh, opportunity to meet you and to uh, get to know you a little bit more, uh, to see you working and to present your exhibition with such uh, refinements and beautiful results. So we are really excited about that. I want to thank uh, everyone who came and saw the work and uh, and show their support for the work that you are doing. Now you have more friends in Chicago sure. that you didn't have before. Sure. And uh, you know, next time you come back, then you know, you the, the word will get out more of of uh, you know the very very first impressions are always very important. I yes. believe, right? <laughs> and uh, I think you leave behind a wonderful collection, the Chicago collection. Exactly. And I want to take this opportunity to say, if you are interested in seeing this collection here in Chicago. Uh, some of the works will stay here in Chicago for a while and you can contact me and I'll be glad to, uh, you know, to make those available to you. They'll be online as well where you can uh, see these works as well. So uh, 
Enrico, you go back, but you leave behind yes, uh, yes. Some, some of your work, which will be wonderful uh, for the connections that were made here with, with us and also uh, with the Italian Institute in exactly. Chicago as yes, well. Yes, yes. So, again, uh, Enrico, I want to thank you. Any last words you want to say to Chicago before no. your trip back to Italy? I would say a big thank you to everyone, to the city, uh, because uh, every person that we met was so kind, so open, and yes. so helpful, really. The mood uh, in which we, we lived uh, this, uh, this month uh, was so friendly yeah. that I can say I've never been in a city so friendly like Chicago. Oh, that's good, but that's good to hear. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, this is true. And of course, the big thank you to you, Sergio, you. to Rene Laverne Rose that uh, helped uh, in curating uh, with you this uh, exhibition. And of course, I want to say thank you to Kerstin. Kerstin is my partner yeah. that is uh, following me everywhere and uh, she's uh, my guardian angel. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, everywhere and uh, she's helped me in every, every way she can. So I also would like to thank you on the other part of the ocean, Italia Arte. Yes, Italia absolutely. Arte and Guido Folco and uh, Museum Meet, Museo mm -hmm. Internazionale Italia Arte that uh, was at the beginning uh, the, the sparkle, the exactly. origin to this, uh, to this uh, connection mm -hmm. and uh, I have to say, I mean, yeah, thank you to everyone that was in this uh, beautiful exhibition that came to see, to talk uh, and uh, yeah, to know me as an artist. Very good, thank you yes. Enrico and hopefully we'll see you very soon in Italy as yes. we also we go in there pretty soon this summer. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks again. Thanks everyone <laughs> for watching through video, everyone here in Chicago. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> and thank thanks, Enrico. All right.